Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the meeting of Cabinet Staffordshire County Council today, Wednesday, the 20th of December 2023. Good morning, everybody. Um, first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. Mr. Bradbury, do we have any apologies, please? Uh, good morning, Leader. Yes, I have two apologies from uh, Councillor Victoria Wilson and from the Deputy Leader, Philip White. Agenda item two, declarations of interest in accordance with Standing Order 16. Do we have any declarations of interest? The record there are none. Item three, decision notice of the meeting held on the 19th of July 2023. Can I have your approval of those as a correct record of the meeting? That is agreed. Agenda item number four is the leader's update. Colleagues, our extra investment in Staffordshire roads has been evident throughout the summer. Fixing more roads is one of the County Council's top priorities so that we can keep our residents and businesses safely on the move. That is why we are spending an extra £5 million on pothole repairs this year and an extra £30 million in large repairs, resurfacing and junction upgrades over the next two years. Schemes include half a million pound improvement on the A5121 Clay Mills interchange, interchange and Derby Road in Burton, the £1.4 million investment in new drains, curbs, paths and resurfacing on the Stone Road in Stafford, plus the new roundabout on the A34 a short distance away for the Pets at Home facility. An £800,000 scheme to resurface a busy junction, install new lights and upgrade pedestrian crossings in Litchfield, and a £1 million investment in new drainage on the A34 in Stone. As ever, we can't fix and improve our roads without some disruption, and I thank motorists for their patience. Year on year, we want to see more motorists travelling across Staffordshire in electric vehicles to reduce carbon emissions and support the county's journey towards net zero. So we're delighted to secure £5 million of government funding earlier this month for electric vehicle charging points across Staffordshire. The funding will allow us to work with businesses and our providers to install more charging points, especially for residents with no off-street parking. It is precisely this type of investment in infrastructure that we need to accelerate the move away from petrol and diesel-powered motoring in Staffordshire. To our schools next, and our rapid response to national issues with reinforced autoclave aerated concrete, hopefully I only have to say that once, known as RAC in the jargon for short, um, every school that the County Council is responsible for remains open and we've ruled out the presence of RAC in many of those schools. A number of schools require more detailed service, surveys and we, we now have an inspection programme in place. Our children have experienced enough disruption to their education in the last three years and don't need any more, so we are working quickly to reassure parents and pupils that Staffordshire schools remain safe. And I pay tribute to Councillor Price whose diligence on this issue with the team has made sure that people are well informed and that the team continues to press on with inspections. Indeed, keeping Staffordshire children safe is our, number one, is, is our number one duty at the County Council. Sadly, too many children continue to lack the loving, caring homes they need to nurture and support them through their early years. We urgently need more foster carers to come forwards to provide those stable homes for vulnerable children. As long as you live in the county and are over 21 and have a spare room, you could be eligible to foster and make a massive difference to a young person's life. There are more details on our website and we will be launching a new campaign this autumn. I was fortunate enough many years ago to the, go to the Foster Carers Awards and I was absolutely stunned by the contribution of so many great people across the county of Staffordshire on the fostering effort. And I know that uh, Councillor Sutton continues to attend those awards and, rec and recognising the contribution that they made. It is very, very fulfilling for those people that participate. And I really would strongly urge you to take a look at the website if it's something that interests you. And finally, as autumn approaches, we urge all vulnerable residents to get their COVID booster and flu jab. The emergence of a new variant is a reminder that COVID-19 is still circulating. And if you have a weakened immune system or have vulnerable or elderly loved ones, now is the time to act. Book in for jabs and boost your immunity before the colder weather is with us. And so on to our first item this morning, uh, which is the minutes of the meeting of the property subcommittee held on the 6th of September, 2023. Uh, for the record, that has been moved. Agenda item number six is Staffordshire means back to business. 
Now, I know that many Cabinet members love to hear the sound of the Leader's voice, and you've got a second opportunity to hear me drone on even more, because Councillor White, the Deputy Leader, is, is absent today um, as a result of... Uh, sadly, his, his wife had a, a little accident playing netball last night and has to, uh, has had to be seen by a doctor, so he's helping out there. So we wish Laura a speedy recovery and hope she hasn't damaged herself too much. In the meantime, it's me again with uh, Councillor White's uh, uh, Staffordshire Means Back to Business report. Thank you, Councillor Williams. That positive note's been a real boost. This month, I will provide Cabinet with updates on a number of key projects with a focus on our work to support Staffordshire people in the employment market. But first, I'll provide an update on the most recent claimant count that was released last week. This month saw a decline of 90 claimants in Staffordshire, which contrasted with an increase seen nationally. The total number of claimants in the county now stands at 14,955, or more interestingly, 2.8% of the working age population. The claimant count rate for in Staffordshire continues to be one of the lowest in the West Midlands and is far lower than the average for the region of 4.9%, and lower than the average for England at 3.8%. The youth claimant count in Staffordshire saw an increase of 65 claimants to a total of 2,885 young people. The proportion of young people in Staffordshire aged 18 to 24 that are claiming work-related universal credit now stands at 4.6%. This is lower than the national rate of 5% and far lower than the regional rate of 6.7%. The continued increase in the youth claimant count highlights the importance of continuing to engage with our younger residents and support them to find employment or continue some form of education or training. Our Staffordshire Jobs and Careers Service has therefore been focusing on the results day recently of both GCSEs and A-level students, promoting the support the team can offer with advice and signposting. Our employer, employment brokers have been supporting people across the county, whether they have received their grades in order to follow their favoured path, or maybe need some advice on where to turn next and consider other avenues such as employment, apprenticeships or alternative training. I am also pleased to report that two members of the Jobs and Careers Service team recently had a visit from, uh, with the Minister for Social Mobility, Youth and Progression, Mims Davis, that's quite a title isn't it, to discuss how they support candidates with challenges in, in accessing the employment market and our support for ex-servicemen and women. I am pleased to say that the Minister was very impressed with our success to date and the companies we work in partnership with to support people into employment. In terms of job vacancies, there was a 15% increase in Staffordshire uh, compared to a 13% increase nationally between July and August. Demand for labour and skills remains high, with there currently being 1.6 jobs available for every claimant within the county, and therefore our focus continues to be to support those who find themselves unemployed to secure one of those jobs. Unfortunately, we've recently heard of the news of the Wilco insolvency, which is due to the continued impact of the shift in shopping habits across the country. We have convened a task force comprising of senior representatives of the County Council, Borough and District Councils, Department for Work and Pensions, and the National Careers Service to exchange information and consider our support offer, including deployment of our Jobs and Careers Service if and when appropriate. Positively, there are around 1,000 retail jobs being advertised within the county and we will work with any former Wilco staff to help them secure one of these jobs to, or to move to work, uh, move to a different area of work. Colleagues will also be aware that the construction of the West Midlands Interchange development is expected to begin before the end of the year. A key aspect of this project will be supporting our residents to take advantage of the employment opportunities through both the construction and operational phases. And we are successful in securing significant amounts of funding for the development of employment and skills programmes. Due to the scale of the development, we have a dedicated employment broker for the project who has now met with the first subcontractor to begin recruitment for the first phase of the build. I also wanted to give a quick update on the progress of our successful £20 million bid from round two of the levelling up fund. The upgrade of the A38 Branson interchange is a key component of this, providing Bertonians with safer and easier access to and from the A38. I'm pleased to report that this has now been agreed with the Department for Transport and is expected to be received by the end of the month. Legal agreements with the developer of the nearby Branson Locks development and national highways are also close to being agreed and it is expected that they will be signed shortly. 
There's a three-month lead-in before the construction can start, and we're therefore expecting works on improving the junction to commence early in 2024. The levelling up fund is also paying for the upgrade of several major roads in Cannock and Stafford and the purchase of a new fleet of low emission buses to improve our public transport network. Finally, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that has supported the many tourism attractions over the summer. The nominations for the Enjoy Staffordshire Tourism Award clo closed last week with judging taking place over the next few months and awards ceremony set for March 2024. The awards give us the chance to celebrate our best tourism and hospitality businesses and the valuable contribution they make to the local economy. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the Staffordshire Means Back to Business report from uh, the Deputy Leader. Agenda item number seven is the Send Accredita Accelerated Progress Plan Enhanced Assess Plan do review, goodness gracious, pathway, strategy for special provision and the Staffordshire Children and Young People's Framework. I won't repeat that because it's all, all quite complicated. Brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Education and SEND, Councillor Price. Thank you, Leader. Um, I'm really pleased today uh, to be bringing this report to you, um, outlining our strategy for our special provision and the enhanced assess, plan, do, review pathway. And I had to practice that a few times. As you know, this work has been in development over the past 18 months, and we now have the outcome from the consultation along with the views of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee. It draws together the developments that support the delivery of a number of plans, including the Accelerated Progress Plan and a Deficit Management Plan, along with the Corporate Delivery Plan. The report sets out how we intend to achieve our vision for all children and young people with SEND to be given the opportunity to achieve everything that they can and are able to engage with the right support at the right time from their parents and carers to the community and the professionals that work with them to make sure that this happens. We know that children and young people have a wide range of different needs and the county is big and different areas face different challenges. The way schools and education works is changing and the continual financial pressures for all public sector partners. This is why we've been working with our partners over the last 12 months to develop a strategy for special provision that delivers a quality of access to education, which meets the individual needs of our children and young people in the local communities to give them the best start in life and a chance to achieve their full potential. The strategy comprises two major components, which are the creation of an additional provision in Staffordshire Special Schools based on a detailed analysis of need a pre and a pre-statutory Stafford Enhanced District Inclusion Support Model to provide mainstream education settings with the resources and support to deliver the graduated response. The support model is proactive early intervention for children and young people, as well as a way of developing sustainable capacity in our mainstream educational settings. A fundamental principle of the proposed model is the mainstream education setting will be supported to develop their capacity to ensure that where possible, children and young people are educated within the local community. The report also sets out how we are working with our special schools to develop capacity to meet gaps in provision, particularly with social, emotional, mental health and autism. Working with schools, we are developing specifications for those needs which will be funded through the High Needs Capital Allocation Fund. And this will also, of course, re reduce the reliance on high cost independent school places and the need for long distance travel for some of our most vulnerable learners. I will now hand over to colleagues for any comments and then I will read out the recommendations. Um. It can only be a, a good thing that we're reducing the amount of travel that young people with special educational needs uh, require, uh, not only for the financial reasons, but also because um, it's an unusual thing to do, isn't it? If you think about children going to school, they're not getting in a taxi and traveling miles and miles and miles, um, as is sometimes the case with the special educational needs children. They're generally reasonably close to their school. And what we do want with our special educational needs cohort is, is to allow them to live a life that's as close to uh, a life of a, a child without special educational needs as possible. So I, I really applaud this and welcome this this paper because I think it's moving us in the right direction uh, and I, I'm thoroughly supportive of your recommendations. Um, ladies and gentlemen, does anybody else have any comments or observations before I ask 
Councillor Price to come back and then read the recommendations. No, Councillor Price, we're back with you. Uh, thank you, and thank you for your comments as well. One of the big areas or aspects for me as well is making sure that those more moderate learners are able to be supported within their mainstream setting, and that's absolutely key, uh, not only for the independents, but to allow those children to, to take on GCSEs and, and, and further their education. So really, really welcome this document. A huge amount of work has gone on behind the scenes, both from officers, um, with the full support of Cabinet and members as well, I might add, who have uh, been very keen to see these changes be made. So I really, really welcome it. So the recommendations, um, A, I continue, or continue to endorse the actions set out in our accelerated progress plan. Endorses B, sorry, endorses a proposed enhanced assess plan do review, pathway and strategy for special provision. C, approve delegated authority to the Director for Children and Families for allocating funding for the eight Stafford Enhanced District Inclusion Support uh, Teams. D, authority to agree to enter into contractual agreements with schools to deliver the CDIS model. E, endorses the proposal to develop a children and young people's framework to enable officers to procure timely, value for money, pre-statutory support where required. E, uh, I, Apologies. Approval to be given to conduct an open uh, tender process in line with Staffordshire County Council procurement regulations and the public contract regulations. Two, that we award the Staffordshire Children and Young People Framework to be delegated to the Director for Children and Families and that the award of call-off contracts under the framework be subdelegated in line with the Council's procurement regulations. And three, if appropriate, Delegated authority for alternative approval of high needs volumes of call-off contracts will be sought as per D13.5 of the Council's procurement regulations. And you'll be pleased to know that is the end of the recommendations. Did everybody get that or do we want them to be read out again? All those in favour? Unanimous. Uh, moving on then to Staffordshire Climate Change Adaptation Strategy. Uh, brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Environment, Infrastructure and Climate Change, uh, Councillor Tag. Uh, thank you, Leader. You'd be pleased when it comes to recommendations. They aren't uh, as much of a mouthful as what uh, Councillor Price has just read. But I'm really pleased to introduce Staffordshire's adaptation strategy. In recent years, uh, as a county, we've seen extreme weathering events increase, with 15 significant flooding events since 2000, nine uh, major storms since 2018, and of course those record high temperatures last year, which we experienced in, in the, the heat wave up to 40 degrees within Staffordshire for the first time. Um, the strategy before you today acknowledges the importance of preparing for the impact of climate change in the future and emphasises the need for adaption planning across all council services. The strategy has been developed as part of a joint effort by the Staffordshire Sustainability Board, which is made up of elected members from councils across the county working together. And it's an indication of our commitment as a local government family in Staffordshire to proactively tackle climate change and those problems posed by it. And each authority has agreed to take it through its cabinet. And today, I'm, I'm taking it through our cabinet here and hopefully we'll get your support. Uh, the strategy focuses on four key areas, infrastructure and buildings, the natural environment, uh, protecting residents and also protecting the local economy which is good for jobs and for people's livelihoods. Uh, the ongoing adaptation initiatives range from drainage systems on uh, to floodplains, restoration of flood defences and upgrades of those flood defences and also proactive measures that benefit residents and nature and all this fits very closely with our emerging local nature recovery strategy which uh, the County Council is the accountable body for for Staffordshire and Stoke. Uh, adapting to the impacts of climate change is just as important as reducing our carbon emissions and striving for net zero by all measures um, we know our climate is warming up. More extreme weather is happening as we see across the world and as we've seen as I said earlier in Staffordshire is becoming commonplace and that means we have to start thinking more widely about putting measures in place to protect our communities, our buildings and our roads and this strategy does just that. Now uh, we aren't starting from a, from a standing start. Adaptation measures are to mitigate climate change are already taking place across the county and have been. Um, and we put an oversized draining system uh, into Hamstall and Ridwell in to protect residents from flooding and restoration um, on the floodplains in Stafford to enable that wildlife to thrive and reduce flooding is underway. And washland enhancements projects in Burton uh, are underway to upgrade the flood defences along the River Trent. 
uh, to balance flooding and uh, with public access and restoration along for nature conservation. So we've got a lot going on already in this area and this strategy just brings it all together along with our colleagues across the, uh, the, the boroughs and districts for a united strategy so we can um, put ourselves in the best position to tackle uh, the results of a warming climate, as I've said, and I'm more than happy to um, endorse the strategy and hope that you will do so today, and I'll read the recommendations after any comments from members. Councillor Jessel. Yes, thank you very much, Chairman. I, uh, this is an excellent report and strategy, and I thank Councillor Tag and his team for all the work that's been done. Um, I think it's, it has a very pragmatic approach, accepting the fact that uh, whatever we do in this country to reduce our carbon emissions, the climate is still going to change. As we well know, there are other nations, uh, India, China, America, whose emissions overshadow ours by a huge extent. So we have to acknowledge that our climate is changing and probably will continue to change. And this identifies what we as a county council can do. Um, as I represent a division which is uh, regularly impacted by the overtopping of the River Trent um, and the, um, the brooks and streams that feed into that, this is most welcome. Uh, and whilst it's not in my patch, uh, the, piece, the, the residents in Maverson Ridge Way, I'm sure, uh, are delighted at the work that's been done there. So um, I'm very pleased about this. I think there's a lot of initiatives um, there's a lot that landowners can do to help in terms of managing this approach. So um, I very much support this. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Deville. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. An excellent report, Councillor Tag. Thanks for bringing it to Cabinet this morning. I think the uh, number of flooding incidents that you mentioned, Councillor Tag, in the report, I think that's probably gone up this morning. Um, and you're right, Julia. Uh, the importance of the work that we're doing now. The importance is just escalating, isn't it? Um, some really good points that you make. Not only, of course, is it essential that we protect our wonderful environment, it's also um, absolutely necessary that we protect the local economy. And I'm really pleased to see that within this strategy, we are looking at the local economy. I think it's also really positive that we're working in partnership with the districts and some really, really good work's already been done. Um, coming from the Moorlands, if I may just pay tribute to Councillor Joe Porter up in the Moorlands, who is absolutely on the ball with everything environmental. I think he's done some great work in the past um, and he's doing great work now up in the Moorlands. But Chairman, this is an excellent report. It's really positive. I've said on many, many occasions, you know, going back years, that work on climate change and our work on the environment needs to be part of our day job. Uh, and I'm delighted to say that it really is. Really good report, Simon. Thank you. Councillor Parry. Thank you, Leader. Uh, I just wanted to follow the, the theme of local economy and uh, that... Um, uh, my colleague Mark Deville has just raised. Um, I had a brain freeze then, sorry. Sorry, Mark. Um, there's a balance sheet here, isn't there, in terms of the, the risks and the liabilities to businesses as they adjust uh, and take on board uh, what they need to do to, be, to contribute to a greener economy or a greener uh, society, community in Staffordshire. But there's also opportunity in there as well, isn't there? Uh, and the report does reference sort of skills and knowledge uh, and how that can be enhanced to ensure that we have, we're, we're in a position to, if you like, to take full advantage of the opportunities this presents. And then thirdly, I think, if we are to uh, improve, uh, it has to be driven largely by business because we need the technology, we need the solutions to be able to uh, um, enact some of the changes that we need to, we need to implement. Uh, and, to, and to drive the economy in that way, as it were, to a greener economy. So just picking up on that in terms of how, how strong that linkage is, and it's a pity the deputy leader wasn't here, isn't here this morning uh, to perhaps to participate in this, but that link between the economy and uh, the green agenda, if you like, the zero carbon agenda, 
there's strong links and strong opportunities that we, we need to make sure that we've, we've glued them together properly and that we've maximised them. Um, just a couple of comments from myself before I ask you to come back. First of all, I'm delighted to see the number of LED streetlights going up around the county. Notwithstanding Councillor Jessel's comments, it's important that we make our contribution to the agenda. Uh, and it's clear for everybody to see residents across the entire county that putting in those LED streetlights um, not only saves electricity and, by definition, carbon as a result, but also I think it's a better street lighting <coughs> arrangement than the old orange sodium lights, to be honest with you. Um, the, the next point um, is to do with the role of landowners. And um, again, just coming in behind Councillor Jessel on this, um, we sometimes assume that landowners mean farmers and owners of large tracts of land, but those people who live in a house are also a landowner. And it was interesting as I was out um, uh, delivering some leaflets this weekend, there's something going on in Tamworth. Um, the, the number of uh, houses now where the option has been taken to completely tarmac over the front garden, uh, which creates runoff. Uh, that runoff didn't used to run off. It used to be absorbed by the grass that was in the, in the front garden and backyards used to have a bit of, um, a bit of grass as well now. Um, as a sort of alternative to grass, I see quite a bit of astroturf. Uh, still causes the same sort of runoff effect. Um, and so I'd, I'd ask residents when they're contemplating uh, going for tarmac on their front drive, just think, is there, is there a, yes, you've decided you want to park your car out the front of your house. That's a perfectly rational thing to want to do. But is there an alternative way of creating a surface for your car to sit on that does absorb some of the water as it, run, uh, as it, uh, as it rains? because we all have a role to play here, and I think uh, I would ask residents to also be mindful of that because it does make an important difference. Um, I have uh, residents in areas I represent. I'm a rural division, same as you, Councillor Jessel, who are affected by climate change, but within the villages, everybody's got their drive concreted over. Um, when it rains, it rains heavier, more heavily these days than I recall years ago, and in shorter bursts, so as a result, that runoff is, is more pronounced. Um, so I think we've all got a role to play, uh, but uh, Councillor Tag, um, clearly a lot of people got a view on this. Uh, I think this is a fantastic report uh, strategy, uh, and I look forward to seeing you implement it uh, across the county of Staffordshire over the next few years. Back to you. Thank you, Leed, and thank you for those comments. Completely agree with the, the driveway issue, and of course, through local planning authorities, um, you know, application is, is, is supposed to be made for those, those alterations, and that's supposed to be weighed up uh, against all the other planning concerns relating to applications. But I think just to respond uh, to a couple of comments, I mean, uh, thank you, Mark, for the comments. I think you're quite right about even this morning, we've seen the, the treacherous weather of we've been coming into Stafford, and there are actually five severe flood warnings in the east of, of the Midlands at the moment that are causing some concern because of the they've had a few days even more rain than us and they've got more to come so you can see the impact as we, we sit here as well by just looking out of the window um, and I, I echo your um, obviously thanks to, to Joe Porter he was um, on the sustainability board when we put this policy together and took it through SSB so he's, he's an architect of this along with, with myself and the other cabinet members and uh, obviously our officers from each of the districts that are fed in and our county officer team as well which I'd like to thank for the work that they've, they've put into this coming forward I think um, Ian Parry, the, the point on, on business involvement and actually getting some other benefits out of this are really key as well because the, the green skills agenda is um, really important and uh, we are working with Keele University on a, a green skill um, um, and got some external funding in place to help us to move that forward as well and an agenda around green skills. Um, I'd also say as well through the lo local nature recovery strategy which sits with this uh, and the sweetest uh, strategies we've got to tackle climate change and the impacts is through that we'll also be seeing you know, that push for green jobs and skills which will help our residents to upskill and in many cases earn a lot more than the average earnings that they earn at the moment through this new agenda that's, that's emerging. So really pleased with this and really pleased that we're going to get this in place and on the book, so to speak. So I'll move to the, the recommendations leader, if I can now find those. As I say, not as arduous as the previous recommendations. I recommend to Cabinet that A, we note and approve this uh, Staffordshire Adaptation Strategy, and B, approves the development of a Staffordshire County Council Adaptation Plan to ensure all services and portfolios, uh, portfolios consider adaptation in their day-to-day -day work and decision-making. I so move. You've heard the recommendations. All those in favour? Uh, that is unanimous. Thank you, Councillor Tagg. Uh, moving on to agenda item number nine, the recommission of shared lives. Councillor Jessel. Yes, 
Yes, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, this uh, has come about because the existing contract for this service is due for renewal uh, at the end of this financial year. As with all recommissioning, our aim is to provide a quality service and at the same time best value for money. This is a regulated service providing support both long and short term for individuals to reach their potential and have fulfilling lives. And it is achieved by the individuals sharing the home of a specially recruited and trained carer and their family. The um, current provider, PSS UK, uh, supports 78 people uh, and there is a total budget cost of 1.3 million for this financial year. The recommendation is that there is no substantial change to the specification or to the budget. The current service is rated good by the CQC at <coughs> their last inspection in 2019. Then the report sets out the timetable for the recommissioning process. Um, so before I, I go through the recommendations, um, I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone might have. Thank you, Councillor Jessel. I, I wouldn't necessarily um, draw any conclusions from the lack of questions. Um, it, it is that this is a, um, a recommissioning process uh, and is, I think, transacting business that we need to transact in order to move forward. So uh, the absence of questions, I think, is indicative of that. So we're back with you with the recommendations. Yes, certainly. Um, recommend A, approves the procurement of the Staffordshire Shared Life Service via a competitive tender in order to appoint a suitable provider who can offer a good quality service and value for money. B, delegates approval for the contract to be awarded to the successful provider to the Director of Health and Care. And C, approves the extension of the current shared life service contract for up to 12 months in the event of an unsuccessful procurement to enable the council to consider alternative options. I so move. Uh, you've heard the recommendations. All those in favour? It's approved. Um, agenda item number 10, Staffordshire Warmer Homes, approval of the spend plans for the home upgrade grant phase two. Uh, Councillor Jessel, Councillor Tag, who is um, who's the main event? It's Councillor Jessel. You're well, on. No, I will start. I will try um, not to steal my colleague's thunder because this is a report which is very good news. Um, this is an extension of existing schemes, and it's, this is particularly the approval of spend, tackling fuel poverty, um, particularly in rural areas, which I think is, is a very good focus for this particular phase. Um, the Home Upgrade Grant Phase 2, um, as I say, is targeting rural properties who are off-grid, off the gas grid, uh, with low en energy ratings and in deprived areas. As we know, uh, damp, poorly heated homes uh, pose a significant public health risk, and therefore this is extremely good news. It improves the quality of the lives of those people. Uh, the scheme will support potentially up to another 530 households, um, and um, it... it is in addition to there's over 900 homes already being improved by these schemes. So it is really good news. Um, it links to an item further on in the agenda because in order to uh, secure this 10 and a half million pounds grant, we had to complete an application by the end of July and I had to use delegated authority to ensure that we secured that funding uh, and hope that that is supported later on on the agenda. Uh, I will hand over to my colleague because uh, not only is it personal good news to those households who that we can help, but also it has another benefit and I will hand over to Councillor Tag. Uh, thank you, Julia. I back um, your moving of this, this item. I think as you pointed out, um, people are under a lot of pressure with, with of energy bills um, and this helps to get a good efficient 
um, you know, sort of system in their homes and also insulation and all other things, which not only cut their bills, but also cut their, their carbon emissions and help us to reduce towards that overall target, which is the 2050 target for us as a, as a county. Really pleased that this is, is focused also on the rural areas. Often we do, do forget about the rural areas and look at the urban areas, and there are pockets and, and areas within the, uh, the rural area where this, this money will be needed to help people to to adapt their homes and I think it's, it's really important and we're building on the work that we've already done on, on an earlier phase of this and as you said Julia that extra 530 properties mainly in the rural area will help us to improve insulation, better heating systems for people and also we'll create local jobs because a key part of this is that we use local skills and local providers to do these, these jobs for us which is, helps the economy in Staffordshire as well doesn't it so I have nothing more to say other than um, opening it up to questions and comments from um, our fellow cabinet members. Uh, thank you. Very welcome. Um, I, I sometimes left scratching my head when I see these, these campaign groups uh, on television uh, doing daft things in forms of protest. Um, I think it's worth coming to Staffordshire County Council to see how much is going on in terms of insulating, reducing carbon emissions from private homes. This is a, this is a real life example of not just the stuff we've done, but also the stuff we're intending to do to insulate homes in Staffordshire. And it's making a contribution to the overall effort. For the idealists who think we can insulate everything simultaneously, we can't. There simply aren't the people available, the tradespeople available in order to deliver those, those sort of um, changes. But we are making incremental progress towards achieving an objective of insulating more homes in the county of Staffordshire and reducing our carbon emissions. And this report takes us some, some considerable way along that journey. Modern homes, of course, have got better insulation standards. They were built in a different time, and therefore um, the building regulations as they exist for modern homes provides for greater, greater insulation in any event. But for those older homes that perhaps um, are, are cold and damp, uh, these improvements will be tremendous. I would hope that we'd be able to have some form of liaison with particularly primary care. So for those individuals who are presenting with uh, respiratory disorders brought on by damp and cold, the question ju just shouldn't be, well, what, what medicine can I give you to get better? The question should be, is your house cold and damp? Because the Staffordshire County Council has got money that it can use to address this issue. We've tried that approach. I would ask for NHS colleagues in primary care to think again about whether or not we could facilitate that, because I think that's a route to making people's lives healthier, as well as pe making people's homes warmer uh, and more fuel efficient. Uh, rant over. Um, Councillor Jessel, we're back with you. Uh, yes, I can confirm. I did ask that question of our public health colleagues, um, and they do link in and identify those particularly with COPD uh, because they will um, receive significant benefit by having warm, well-insulated homes. Um, and also our own social workers and people who go out to provide our home care services are in an ideal position to identify those individuals um, for whom this will be an absolute, potentially, lifesaver. Um, as I say, I'm really pleased that it is being targeted at rural areas because they have less options available to them. Uh, and as my colleague has said, uh, you know, it's not just about having efficient heating systems, it's ensuring that the insulation uh, of homes is up to scratch. So I'll move to the recommendations. It's recommended that Cabinet A note the award to the Council of the Home Upgrade Grant Phase 2 of 10.5 million, approve expenditure of the Home Upgrade Grant Phase 2 as set out in paragraph 7 of this report, and C delegate authority to the Director of Health and Care to complete a compliant procurement process and appoint providers to oversee and install thermal efficiency measures in people's homes in line with the grant conditions and approved expenditure. I so move. You've heard the recommendations. All those in favour? It's approved. Uh, moving on to agenda item 11, it is decisions met, taken by cabinet members under delegated powers. Uh, first, we have two decisions made by the Cabinet Member for Education and SEND, uh, identical in approving the award of compensation following an investigation of the by the Local Government and Social Care Ombudsman into a complaint against the County Council. Uh, third is the cab from the Cabinet Member for Health and Care, which was referred to in the previous report, in approving the grant award of £10.5 to be awarded 
by the Government Departments of Energy, Security and Net Zero uh, following their approval of the Council's online home upgrade grant phase two spend plan on the 10th of July. And I'd just like to pay tribute to the team for getting that application in uh, very, very quickly and in good order. Congratulations to the team that did that. Um, Finally, Cabinet Member for Education and SEND in approving options to extend the current independent special school contract with amended contract value. They are the delegated decisions. Moving forward to the forward plan of key decisions, um, this is all in October. First of all, in, in public, the integrated performance report quarter 2, 23-24, brought to you by myself and uh, Councillor Parry. In private, Nexus Care Trading Services Limited annual report brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Commercial Matters, Councillor Deville. Uh, in private, unregulated placements update brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Children and Young People, Councillor Sutton. Moving forward to November, in public, Staffordshire Employment and Skills Strategy 23 to 30 brought to you by the Deputy Leader of the Council and the Cabinet Member for Economy and Skills, Councillor White. Climate Change Action Plan Review and Climate Change Annual Report brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Environment, Infrastructure and Climate Change, Councillor Tag. You, you're at it all the time, aren't you, Councillor Tag? Yeah, never letting us off the hook on the climate change agenda. Um, again, in public, the Strategic Vision for Early Years brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Children and Young People, Councillor Sutton. Um, in public, the half-yearly Treasury Management Report brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Finance and Resources. Uh, then in private, the Families, Health and Wellbeing 0-19 service brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Children and Young People, Councillor Sutton. In private, additional nursing capacity brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Health and Care, Councillor Jessel. Again in private, uh, provision of a waste transfer facility brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Environment, Infrastructure and Climate Change, Councillor Tag. Wow, November's going to be a big one, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, bring your flask. Um, and then in December, in public, the medium-term financial strategy 24 to 29, brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Finance and Resources. Uh, then older people commissioning strategy, brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Health and Care, Councillor Jessel. Provision of services for children and young people, brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Children and Young People, Councillor Sutton. And then moving forward into January, um, in private, unregulated placements, brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Children and Young People, Councillor Sutton. And then in February, in public, Integrated Performance Report Quarter 3, brought to you by the Cabinet Member for Finance and Resources, Councillor Parry and myself. And then the final one uh, scheduled is uh, in March, in private, Burton Regeneration, brought to you by the Cabinet Mem Member for Communities and Culture, Councillor Wilson. A big agenda for the autumn term um, and plenty to be getting on with in the new year. It'll be interesting to see when the government announces the settlement and you'll see flurry of activity over in the finance department they they're they're very restive over there and relaxed and looking quite calm but uh, things will start to move very very shortly i'm sure um right ladies and gentlemen there are no uh, excluded items so for this morning's meeting thank you very much indeed for your contribution uh, that concludes the meeting <laughs>